What's going on everyone? Steven here, back with the next episode in the Cuphead Let's Hack series. Today we're going to talk about the super meter. And I'm going to show you basically how to set up an infinite super meter. Um, so first of all, typically some of you, you might jump in the game, try a 4 byte scan for what seems like a simple number with these cards that pop up down here. I'm going to go ahead and open the process with Cheat Engine here. Uh, where's Cuphead? <clears throat> there we go. Alright, so, um, let's just say right now we have zero. I'm going to do this parry here. I'm in the tutorial in the game. Um, the tutorial gives you a lot of things that, uh, scenarios where you can do some hacking without having to worry about getting damaged by enemies and stuff like that. So, this is a good really good place to do this. Alright, so I'm going to do this, and I've got one of these cards down here. So I'm going to try searching for one. Alright, and then I'm going to get another one, and search for two, get another one, three, okay. <clears throat> Look at these numbers over here. You see how they're all changing? And this one did change. See how they're changing? None of these are this value. So, what could be the issue here? Um, sometimes it's helpful if you do a search for all, but if you play through the game, what you'll notice is you don't just get one of these cards in your super meter right away. It builds up as you attack enemies. And over time, you get a full card, which then allows you to use that power. So when things build up like that, they tend to be float-based values, floating point. So we're going to try a new search for float. And what you could do is we'll start with um, unknown initial value. We'll do that. Okay, now that we have that, let's go ahead and do a parry to get another card here. All right, now we could search for a changed value or an increased value. I'm going to try increased value. All right, and then I'm going to do some unchanged value scans to weed out a bunch of this stuff. All right, look how many results that whittled down. So you can just sit here and keep doing that. I set up hotkeys usually so that I can just hold it down. If you want to set up hotkeys, you can go edit. Uh, settings, hotkeys, and here with these things you can set these to hotkeys. All right, so I do shift and delete as unchanged. All right, <clears throat> now I'm going to get another one. Sorry, I keep coughing in your ear. Like I said in the last episode, I've got a cold or something like that, so really sorry. Okay, let's try increased value again, and then let's try some unchanged. Okay, let's use one of these and uh, look for a decreased value. All right, so let's go decreased value and then unchanged. Let's do it again. Decreased value. All right, we're starting to whittle it down now. 251 results. I'm doing unchanged. Let's do unchanged again. All right used another one and then I'm gonna get one which puts me back at two which is what I had so now I can do unchanged again because even though we used one I gave myself one back presumably the value in memory is unchanged from the last time we scanned so I'm gonna do unchanged probably bigger than zero so let's say bigger than zero I'm just showing you some different ways that you can go about whittling your way down uh, unchanged. All right, let's look through here. <clears throat> Typically, it's none of these numbers, these huge numbers. So we can count those out. See these ones that just changed here? Let's do a next scan for unchanged. All right, so just based on the values you see here, how could you maybe correlate to what we see on the screen here? You know, you could maybe go for these ones, but it doesn't really seem to 
make much sense. 20 doesn't quite seem to make much sense outside of the fact that we have a 2 here and then there's two cards. So maybe these are it. One of these two. And this is very common where you'll have one value that's the number represented on the screen even though we don't see a 2, 0 here. And the other one will be your actual value in memory. So let's go ahead and try to change this one to 50. All right, now let's fire a shot. All right, now we're down to 40, 30. All right, so this is our value. So the reason it's a float, if I change this to 25, watch these cards. Well, let me fire a shot. See how it's half of a card here? Like I was saying, as you go through the game and you defeat enemies, this card will you know, raise higher and higher and higher, and finally it turns over, and that's when you've earned that for your super meter. So that's why it's these are float-based values. Um, if you had just done the tutorial like I did when I first jumped in, I didn't understand why in the world they were <clears throat> uh, float values in increments of 10 for each card. But... That's the value of testing your hacks and stuff so that you can really see how a game is utilizing something, especially if you don't understand uh, the purpose of certain things. All right, so um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. So now what we can do is you could technically just click here to lock the value if that's all that you want to do. You could try to find the base address for this. Um, do pointer scanning, things of that nature, or my favorite way is just see what writes to this. But there's two things that I want to mention here. So let's see what writes. All right, let's see. Sorry, I got a little text message here. All right, so first we're going to see what writes to the address whenever we... Um, you know, gain any amount in our super meter. All right. All right. We have these two things that write to that address. Okay. Um, but we know that there are other things that affect this, right? So we can gain a card by doing a parry. We can lose one by firing one of those super shots. So let's fire the super shot to find out what writes to this address whenever we're taking away one of these cards. All right, And the goal in mind is to find perhaps one of these instructions that covers both scenarios so that you can influence that however you want. All right. So see this middle instruction has a count of two. All right. That means that instruction ran whenever we got a card in our super meter and whenever we used one. So if we wanted to create a cheat that's going to cover both of those scenarios, we could work with this instruction. So let's just go show disassembler and see what we see here. All right. <clears throat> so this is storing whatever the new value is uh, into our memory address. So we could just um, if we nopped this, replace with code that does nothing, then that's going to do nothing for us whenever we shoot, but also when we gain one, so we're not going to gain any. So if you don't have any cards, you, you don't want to do this. Presumably, unless one of these other instructions runs, um, then let's see what happens. Because one of those other instructions might add to it, actually. Okay, it does. So this instruction does still add to it, which is good. So maybe this one that subs, subtracts, you could go to that one and just nop that one. Let's restore the original code. Let's show disassembler for this. All right, see this sub P? That looks like that's where the subtraction happens. But let's just go replace with code that does nothing here. And let's fire a shot. All right, we have infinite of those. <clears throat> and we're still gaining our cards. All right, now the reason I wanted to do this one is um, you could write a cheat that whenever you gain one, um, 
you can give yourself max uh, meter, basically. So I'm going to right click here, say restore with original code. Go back to this one. Show disassembler. All right. Um, and now what we can do is right here, we could say tools, auto assemble, template, AOB injection. Um, you could just call this like inf meter. Okay, now that we've got this, what we can do is right here in this code, we can do whatever we want. So what this instruction is saying is from the FPU, store the value that's in ST0 into this memory address. Now, for those of you who are new, I know that was like speaking complete Greek, but <laughs> it's just another way of taking a value that's somewhere and putting it into the memory address that holds your value. All right, so what we can do is if we want, we can comment that out and just say, um, since we know that 50 is the max value of these, then we can just say, uh, move into ESI plus 68, a float of 50, a float 50. All right, so now that we've got that, we're moving 50 into our memory address whenever either one of these things happens, whenever we gain one or whenever we use a shot. So let's go file, assign the current cheat table. Here it is, we could call this infinite meter, or you could say infinite slash max meter, because it's going to max it out. All right, now let's enable this. Well, let's give ourselves 10. Let's fire a shot. All right, so now we have zero. Let's enable this, okay, and let's gain one. See how we have 50 there? All right, that maxed it out whenever we gained one. Um, now if we use shots, it just stays at 50. But let's go ahead and do zero again here. I'm going to fire a shot. I disabled that script. Now I'm going to enable it. All right, and I'm going to say, well, actually, let's gain one first. All right, see how we have just one? Now I enable the script. I'm going to fire a shot, and it should go up to our max. There we go. So now we've covered those two things if we want to max out our meter, regardless of whether we use something that takes up a card or we gain just one, which will max it out. All right, so that's actually a pretty simple script. Um, you know, there's other ways that you can go about this and other types of cheats you can make, so I definitely encourage you to play around with different things. So anyway, um, and one more thing that I want to mention is for those of you who care about keeping things balanced, <clears throat> this FSTP here, um, usually whenever you go into a subroutine, whatever it uses, the floating point registers for, um, when you hop out of that subroutine or that entire routine, the values in the FPU aren't relevant to anything outside of it. So you don't necessarily have to worry about balancing it. I like to do it at all times anyway. So what you can do is just FSTP ST0, just like that. And what that does is instead of popping the value into a memory address like this does here, it just pops the value of ST0 off uh, the stack, the FPU stack. So effectively, we ran this instruction without putting the value anywhere, and then we put our own value into that instead. So now if I disable this, and then, well, let's see. Let me close and then reopen it, and then you get OK down here. So FSTP, ST0, say OK. Oh, oh it's like this, ST zero. Always mix that up. Say okay. All right, so now basically we can still run this cheat just like we did before. Everything's fine, but the FPU stack is balanced. The whole reason I mentioned that is because sometimes you can write a script 
like this and just do like maybe that one thing here and comment that out and maybe the game crashes or some other funky behavior happens and you're like what's what's going on it may be an issue of keeping things balanced where you need to so anyway um yeah, that's that. In the next video, I'll probably cover coins and one more thing, since coins uh, shouldn't take up too much time. Um, but I'll check it out and see. Some other videos I'll be doing are like Infinite Jump uh, and some other things like that. So hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Uh, don't forget to check out the playlist. I'm going to have a number of these videos for Cuphead. And also check out other videos on my channel, especially if you're interested in game hacking. I have a whole bunch of tutorials. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon in the next video. Take care.